Hello, welcome to another video of Code Snippet. And in this video, we are going to look into how we can trigger a Lambda function from API Gateway and have a fully functional serverless API. We have already seen what is Lambda. We have already seen what is API Gateway. In this video, we will see how we can trigger Lambda function from API Gateway. Well, let's get started without wasting any time. This is going to be a fun video. So sit back, relax and enjoy this. All right, so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video to trigger a Lambda function from API Gateway. Pretty simple stuff we are going to look into. So first we will create a Lambda function. So we know how to create that already. We have seen it in this particular playlist. After that, we will create an API Gateway and we will trigger a Lambda function from the API Gateway and we will see how we can do that and we will test it out. Now, if I go back over here, then this is something we have seen in the last video, right? Now your user can hit the URL of API Gateway and we can trigger whatever we want. For example, in the last video, we have triggered a JSON placeholder API where we have fetched some kind of data from JSON placeholder. Now in this video, what we are going to do from our API gateway, we will trigger a Lambda function. So the API that we are going to create over here will be a fully serverless API because it is running based on a Lambda function. So that is basically the simple agenda. So we are just looking into the connection of API gateway and Lambda function. API gateway and Lambda function separately we have seen already, right? Now let's get started and let's go to AWS console. So first what we'll do, let's go ahead and create a Lambda function for us. So I'll just go ahead and say create Lambda over here. And here I will just start from scratch. And here I will just say Lambda API and I will just select Java 21 over here. Rest of the things I'll keep same and I'll just say create function. So now it is creating a function for us. So there we go. Our function is basically created. This is basically the overview that we have seen already. Now here, what we are going to do, we need a Java code to upload over here, right? So let me just bring up my IntelliJ over here. So there we go. Now here, if you see, this is basically the same project that we have seen in the last video. In the Lambda video, we have just created a simple handler. But now in this video, what I have done, I have just added another handler, which is Hello Lambda over here. The class name is Hello Lambda, which is implementing a request handler interface as API Gateway will send us a request, right? After that, what we will do, we'll just have a simple method. So this is basically the method coming from your request handler, which will have some input and some context to it. This input will basically contain whatever data we send from our API gateway. And here what we will do, we will just simply print it. We will do nothing much. We will just simply print it for now. We are not doing anything with that particular data, right? So that's basically it. Now what I will do, I will just open this. I will say package and it will just build a jar for us. If you see build is successful. Now if you see over here in the target folder, we have this jar. Now what we will do, we'll just simply upload that jar to our Lambda function. I'll say upload and here I'll select this jar. I'll say open and I'll say save. Now successfully updated the function. So our function is basically updated. And after that, we need to update this handler as well. So if you see over here, we have org.example.hello Lambda over here, right? So I'll say org.example.hello Lambda and our handle request should be the same, right? And I'll just say save. After that, I will go to test section. And what I will say, I'll just create a new test event. And what I will do, I'll just say test. Let's see what happens. If you see it's green. And if you see it is just printing whatever we have sent over here from this particular event JSON, right? Simple stuff basically. So that means our Lambda function is working just fine. So Lambda function is not a problem. Lambda function is there and if you notice over here, it is present inside US East 1. So our Lambda is basically ready, right? So I have just created this Lambda quickly. And if you don't know how to create a Lambda, then I have already covered it in this particular series. What exactly is Lambda function and how to create a Lambda function. So if you don't have understanding of this Lambda and how I created it, even if things are a little bit unclear, just go ahead and watch that particular video. You will have a clear understanding of that. So our Lambda is ready. So if I go to functions, you will see our Lambda API is basically running. But now if you see our Lambda is just hanging in the air. If I go back over here in the Lambda API. It is just hanging in the error. It has no trigger or no destination basically. Now who will trigger this Lambda? There are multiple ways to trigger Lambda. If you remember from the last video and one of the way is by using API gateway. So if you remember this particular diagram, then your Lambda function can be triggered by test event, which we just tested. After that, it can be triggered by using event inside your S3 bucket. This we have already seen when we saw Lambda function. 
after that it can be a sqs or sns event or it can be api gateway as well where we can actually expose a api to our customer or any other third party which can invoke that api and trigger our lambda now what we'll do we'll just create a api gateway first right so let's go over here let me search api gateway let me go to apis open it in new tab so there we go so basically we don't have much over here so let's go ahead and try to create api now here we have different options and i will go to rest api and let's say build and here i will say new api and here i will say lambda rest api lambda rest api after that i will keep api endpoint type as regional again ip address type also i'll keep ip v4 and let's say create there we go so we have our api gateway created now what we can do we can just create a resource let's say and let's say trigger that means i want to trigger my lambda function so slash trigger basically you don't really need to create a resource it will just be a string coming after your slash right your url slash there will be something right so i'm just adding a trigger so that i want to trigger a lambda function not much basically and inside trigger what i will do now I will go ahead and create a method and now here i will select get method type as get and now integration type will be our lambda function to so integrate your api with lambda function and here if you see we need to select lambda function provide a lambda function name or alias you can also provide arn from another account you can also trigger the lambda function which actually exists in another account right for now what i'll do i'll just try to search or we only have one so it is just giving us so i'll just select this and if you see over here we have this availability zone as well so in this zone we have created this lambda function right so it is visible over here in the api gateway after that rest of the things i'll just keep same integration timeout i will keep same method request setting you don't really need to change url query string parameters nothing needs to be changed after that we don't have any request headers and request body let's not give anything now i'll just say create method so there we go a method is created for us if you see over here on slash trigger get we have this execution method we have client we have method request we have integration request it will go ahead and trigger this lambda function over here so this lambda function will be triggered will send some response and that response will be sent to our client if you remember from the last video we need to deploy this api and we need to create a stage let's create a stage as dev and let's say deploy there we go so we are able to deploy this particular api for us right now what i will do i'll just say invoke url and i will just go ahead and paste it over here and there we go it says missing authentication token so we need to add trigger over here as well and let's send it now now if you see we are getting hello from lambda you might not be able to see it let me just zoom it a bit if you see over here we are getting hello from lambda if i refresh now we will end up getting the same string and this is basically the same string which is coming from our function so this is basically our lambda function or java function where we have deployed it and it just says hello from lambda and we are not passing any input over here now so that's why we are not getting much if i go back over here and if i go to apis if i go inside this particular api and go inside our get method and if you see over here we are not supporting any request body so what we will do let's try to edit this and let's try to provide a request body over here so i'll just add a model i'll say application slash json and we'll say model and we'll keep model as empty and we'll just save this is basically a support for content type that means we can add a json body as content type right and we can pass it now we won't be able to pass it over here in the browser right so what i will do i'll just copy this let me copy and let me bring up my postman there we go so there we go i have created this api and here is basically the simple body i'm passing over here for testing purpose and let me send it now if you see we are getting the respective output and in this particular field it is just printing whatever we are sending right so if i now say hello from chetan and again send it then you will see the respective message being printed over here so that means whatever we are passing from here is basically being printed and this particular lambda is being invoked right not a big thing it's a very simple thing right very simple stuff basically so now if you see we have this particular api that we have created and we are able to access from our browser so what it will do it will just hit our api gateway and it will go ahead and trigger our lambda function lambda function will return some response and that response will go back to our client now if you see now if you observe over here 
this flow is completely serverless do we have any server no we don't have any server lambda is basically serverless api gateway is exposing a api for you you can just go ahead and hit this api and it will just go ahead and invoke this particular lambda function right simple stuff basically so that's pretty much it we have created a lambda function after that we have created a api gateway and we have triggered lambda function from our api gateway simple stuff we have seen in this particular video in future videos we are going to play a lot on api gateway lambda functions and dynamo db right that is why i wanted to show the quick connection between your api gateway and lambda function so that when we play around with it in future you should be able to know that how we are doing this connection so that is pretty much it on this particular video if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they also have idea about how to trigger a lambda function from api gateway that's it for this video see you in the next video